Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's the Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Now Jason, as the temperature gets nicer, we want to be outside, but the ticks also oh, want to yeah. be there. We're getting, we're getting into full-fledged tick season. So anytime you're out in the woods and wilderness around brushy areas, you certainly want to be uh, aware uh, that ticks are going to be could be a problem. You want to dress appropriately. You want to use uh, permethrin or uh, if you're putting it on your skin, a, a DEET based spray. Uh, permethrin is going to be more for your clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to dress a certain way. Typically, tucking your pants into your socks. Uh, lighter colored clothes can be good uh, in order to see the ticks more easily, which if you have a dark color on, you know, they just blend in. So you may not realize that you're getting into ticks. Um, and it's good if you've got, you know, your family with you about every two to three hours to kind of check and make sure that you've not gotten into ticks. But it seems like here recently that you know, they can cause some illnesses. Over time, we've seen an increase in the number of species of ticks that we have in Kentucky, mm -hmm. and they do vector different diseases, and with the introduction of more species comes more disease possibilities. So we hear more and more about uh, alpha-gal, which mm -hmm. is a red meat allergy, seems to be, seems to be more prominent mm -hmm. than it's ever been. Um, you know, I personally had ehrlichiosis, which is a tick uh, vectored illness, um, and we've also got Lyme disease, of course, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, amongst amongst many other things that you can get from ticks. So um, we have seen, you know, the Lone Star tick, for instance, is probably one of our most common ticks, and it vectors the majority of these diseases, with the exception of Lyme disease. So anytime you're out and about, there's a very good chance any tick can be a problem too. Um, the small ones can just as easily carry these diseases as a large mature tick. As a matter of fact, the ticks I had on me when I did get ehrlichiosis were the size of a, of a pinhead. Yeah. Very, very small. So you have to be really vig vigilant with those, yes. you know, because they are so small. It almost looks like little black dots on your skin. Um, but they do have to, they do have to bite you, right? And so that checking every two hours is important just so that they don't latch on, right? Sure. It's, it's best if you can detect those ticks before they actually do get embedded because that's when they transmit that disease over to the person. And then the longer that they are embedded, the more, the higher the probability that you are gonna maybe get infected from those. Just because they, they carry that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it. Uh, so it is, it is important to be timely and remove those ticks properly. You were, you were really sick with uh, that. I was very, very sick. Um, it, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was rough. And I've known people with Rocky Mountain spotted fever, with Lyme disease, and it's, it, these are things you don't want. Right, and a lot of times it's hard to diagnose. So if you have, you know, if a tick has embedded or you need to tell a physician if you're having some, some symptoms like that so they can run those tests. And it had been a week. It had been a week. That's another thing a lot of people, like I, I didn't really think that it could have been that because it had been a week since I, since I had had those ticks on me. But it took that length of time in order for those things, those symptoms to show up. So don't think it's gonna happen the next day or even the next day. So you need to keep that in the back of your mind. And you know, a lot of times we say that if you have a tick attached, when you remove the tick to keep it, just in case something like that were to happen. Yeah, so we do offer uh, um, identification services. So you can put that into like a sealed uh, Ziploc bag, bring it into the extension office and we can recognize if it's, you know, a dog tick or a Lone Star tick or an, an Asian longhorn tick. Mm -hmm. uh, we can help you to identify those because different types of ticks vector different diseases. You need to use some fine tip tweezers and the key is is that we want to remove the mouth parts. So, you know, obviously when they embed, they're, they're sucking, they have a piercing sucking mouth part and it can easily be left behind. So we need some fine tip tweezers. Don't twist, we need to just pull straight out and uh, remove that tick. And then if you've got any concerns, of course, get that tick identified. Thanks for watching the Farm and Home Show and we'll see you next time.